Hey everyone, I wanted to do a video here kind of talking about poor man's fiberglass. I've done a couple videos already, kind of time lapses explaining uh, what I'm doing and how it's all working, but I kind of want to give you an update here at this current state before I proceed on. So what I ended up doing was um, I have to do the back first because you want the back to lap you can kind of see here this line it laps and then the side went on second uh, so that way as i'm driving down the road and you know rain you want it kind of like shingles on a roof you want it to flow off even though this should be sealed you still want it you know just flowing that way so it's not constantly trying to break that seal um, so I had to do the back first and if you look pretty closely I don't know if if you can see it in this video you can tell that this was the first one I did I didn't have it pulled tight I didn't use an iron um, you know it's not terrible but you can kind of see like down here um, you can see some ripples where there's there's bubbles in it you know it's it's not completely making contact um, I still think it's okay I'm still happy with it but um, I got better as I as I went along so I think um, this side, what I did was I did the top half first, and then I did the bottom half. It actually went a lot easier doing that because I just I set the piece of canvas up on top, folded it over, uh, put my first coat of Type Bond Two down, and then rolled this down. Used an iron to kind of press it while it was dry, and that kind of holds it, you know, kind of in place. It's not real tight, but it does hold it pretty well. And then I put uh, Type Bond 2 on the outside to really kind of stick it in there, and then I let it sit overnight to dry. Um, the problem was having it done the top half first. Um, it, it went on a lot easier, like I said, but uh, I ended up with a, a seam that has more bubbles in it than I was expecting, especially over here. Um, it kind of it kind of turned out with a lot of bubbles again. I'm not upset uh, I'm just you know if you were being a perfectionist That's something to be a little a little worried about I didn't ever quite figure out um, the best way to do the bottom like I said in the previous video um, Here you can see about the bottom inch. I had poor man fiberglassed um, Before I even put the board up here uh, Just to kind of get so so that this bottom would have a little bit of a, a lip in it And then I also have butyl tape there that this is smashed up against so uh, water can't get up there, you know, fingers crossed if I did this right. Um, so seeing these ripples down here is a little concerning, but it's probably not the end of the world. Um, let me go to the other side. Um, this one I did the same time as the other one. I did one side than the other, but this side I did the bottom half first and it was more difficult, but it does seem like it came out a little bit better. I do have some bubbles over here. Um, same thing. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pointing out all my flaws, um, but uh, you know, I, I'm sure no matter what I do, they're still going to show through. One other thing I want to mention was I have so I did the tight bond two, right? I did, I put down some tight bond two, put the canvas down, put tight bond two on top of that. Um, I noticed walking through here, I kind of, you know, brushed up against the side and it was, <laughs> it was pretty gritty. Um, compare it to like a uh, bed liner on, you know, a spray in bed liner on your truck. Um, I, I didn't really like it. And so I know that you can, you can, um, sand this and so i've got a little air power dual action sander and i went with 80 grit which is pretty pretty tough but i wanted to kind of make a quick pass and just going over that once it got to where it was smooth to the touch so you can still kind of feel ripples in there but it doesn't hurt it, it feels like i'm touching can uh, you know cloth or something it's it's really not that bad i was worried though that sanding it i would knock too much of that tight bond two off and lose some of my water resistance and so I went and bought a gallon of Type Bond 3. This stuff is about double the price of Type Bond 2, but it is it's supposedly 100% waterproof. Um, it it went on. Uh, I, I after everything. So the the negative, obviously, besides price with Type Bond 3, is they say I don't know if this is true or not, but they say it won't stick to itself. So if you use Type Bond 3 instead of Type Bond 2, you're going to have more problems with these laps, um, which is something you're going to do if you're planning on. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know if you can get a piece of canvas that would be long enough to do the whole thing and not have a seam, but you're going to have seams. You're going to want to use tight bond two. So I took a uh, tight bond three, a hundred percent. I didn't dilute it at all. And I just did this side and this front side. Um, and these are more smooth than the other two sides. And that's because, um, 
after I did the Type Bond 3, it was still pretty smooth, but I went ahead and stuck a 120 grit um, disc on my uh, dual action sander and I hit it again real quick with that. And it, it dust goes everywhere when you're doing that, but you end up with a, a surface that you're not, you know, it's still got some grit to it, but it's not so much grit that it's painful. I haven't done that yet to this side. So this is just type on two. I don't know if it's going to show up in the video or not, but you can kind of tell that. Um, and, and even if you feel it, this feels more like cloth. This kind of feels like plastic. So the Type Pond 3 uh, definitely kind of makes it into plastic. Now, uh, as far as lapping goes, I'm not poor man fiberglassing the roof. Let me get up here and show you. I've actually got some kind of roofing material that my dad gave me. It's some kind of really good uh, commercial roofing. He said it's, it, you know, they had three options when they redid the roof on his commercial property. And this was the, the best of them all. And so he had a, a like a part, part of a roll cutoffs and I was able to get a piece that fit uh, pretty good up here. I cut this. This is not how it's going to be. Um, I've got it just probably three or four inches longer. Uh, so it's overhanging the sides. Whenever I get the trim, I'll actually figure out how much of this I'm going to use and I'm going to cut. So um, the front was the last one that I did. And you have to, because again, I wanted this to lap over and then the front to come up to the edge. Um, you know, again, for because the, the water could potentially be blasting it here. And so you want it to kind of work its way this way and then work its way back. Um, and so this was the last one I did. I had a lot of high hopes for it. I had it pulled tight. I ironed it forever. I mean, I was like, man, this is going to work. And then out of nowhere, it all looked perfect whenever I left. And then um, out of nowhere, I got this huge bubble right here. Um, all kind of bubbles up here at the top. Again, it's lapped, uh, you know, it, this one's actually lapped about four inches up on the roof. And then I've got the roof material glued down to that um, to really uh, solidify it. But I have another really nasty looking bubble right here. So I don't, I don't know what went wrong here. Um, it's, you can kind of feel that this one feels like I, I kind of skimped on the tight bond. Maybe I didn't use enough. To me, it felt like this was just sucking it up. I kept mixing it and throwing it up here. And I'm like, I feel like I'm mixing so much more than I have been. Um, but obviously I didn't because it doesn't look like I did. You can see a lot of spots like right here where it almost didn't get enough, um, you know, and it's, it's kind of fraying. Um, my coat of type on three over this will, will fix that and it'll kind of plasticize if that's a word, this whole thing. But anyway, um, that's been my experience so far. I mean, feel free when you're doing this, pull it tight if you can. Um, overlap it and put some nails in to hold it. So it, it pulls tight and then it holds tight. Um, I didn't do that with the front. I did do that with the sides. And like I said, the sides, there's a few bubbles here and there, but really overall, they look really nice in, in my opinion. Um, and uh, th this is not a seam, by the way. It looks like it is. It's just because I did the top half uh, separately from the bottom half. Um, and so this just has a little extra glue that the rest of it doesn't. Um, I was worried that you would see the seam, but you really have to focus hard to see it. The seam is right here. And this is where the two pieces of wood join together. It's, you know, four foot long pieces of wood. So four feet up is right there where you can see that seam. Again, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it once you paint it. I hope this seam goes away when I paint it, because again, it's not a seam. It's just extra tight bond, but that's where I'm at. I'm excited because I'm really close. I, I got a tight bond three this and the front, which I'll probably do this evening before I go to bed. And then tomorrow, uh, if I have some time, I can hit it. I mean, it only takes about 15 minutes to hit that real quick with the dual action sander. And then I like to vacuum all the dust off of it. And then I'll be ready to go. I'll be ready to start painting this thing. Um, I did get the tires in. That was really cool. Um, they're sitting, there's one right there. Um, they, uh, they, they've been back ordered and they keep getting delayed. I've been waiting for them for about a month and a half now. And I happened to see that discount tire had some in stock. So I canceled my order with uh, e trailer and bought them on, uh, we just bought them locally and had them mounted and everything. So that's going to be my spare. I think I'm going to end up putting the spare right here. I'm going to probably just weld some two inch square tubing and then come out with a bracket and a flat plate, um, so that it won't extend out further than my fender. Um, I got this. This was way too expensive, but you know, you, you kind of do what you got to do. I paid uh, about almost $200 for a four by eight sheet of this diamond plate steel. It's 14 gauge, really thin. I think I calculated this as about um, 
65 pounds worth of just because I, I, I plasma, I torch cut it. Um, and that plasma cutter, I mean, I, I love that thing. It does a good job. Um, you can see I just put a straight edge up to it and get it going and then just kind of slowly move it along and it, it just cuts it really good. Um, uh, I got some uh, grinded off steel so I can go ahead and weld this in place. It, it's 14 gauge, so it's real flimsy. So I'm thinking once I uh, actually get that thing welded down, it should really stiffen it up. And uh, I'm going to plug weld it too. So the pros of plug welds is they're really strong. You just drill a hole through the base material, and then I'm going to get my welder and just fill that with weld. So it's it kind of, in essence, does the same thing that a bolt does. The con is that I'm probably never going to be able to remove this piece of diamond plate, which thinking about it it's steel it should last the life of the vehicle you know the life of the trailer if it was wood i'd be a little more concerned about that but i really didn't want to have bolt heads showing you know when you weld a corner like this all you have to do is get your angle grinder and your cutting disc and you just hit that weld right in the middle and you can cut it off fairly easy so it would be possible to remove this thing um i have no clue how i would remove plug welds um, it would be possible to remove this if I didn't plug weld it, but I am going to plug weld it. I think I drilled, um, five holes total about a foot apart from each other. So hopefully that's enough to kind of take some of that noise out. Um, that's where I'm at. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out tongue weight. I just kind of, since the tires, I got the tires in yesterday. So, uh, just threw them on just to kind of see the tongue weight. And I was rocking a solid 30 pounds. <laughs> I'm not done yet, clearly, so um, really I need to wait, and that was before I put the uh, diamond plate on, so I really need to wait until it's done, because I'm going to be adding, <laughs> excuse me, more weight here to the back, like, you know, the door, that's going to add some weight, uh, if I end up putting more batteries in, that's more weight, all that's at the very back of the trailer, which is behind the axle, plus my cargo hatch, which is almost empty right now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to put my wheel chocks and stuff like that in there, that's going to add even more weight. Uh, actually, it's got my, my daughter's uh, uh, bucket. She brought that out and put it in there. So uh, I guess she's having fun with it. So hopefully this video has been uh, good for you guys. Hopefully you're learning something about poor man's fiberglass. I know I am. I'm enjoying it. Um, I really can't wait to see how it looks. It, like I said, every single time I do a coat, I kind of step back and look at it. And besides the fact that it looks like dog urine, um, that's just coloring, it actually kind of looks cool. The, the more I do it, it's, it's kind of starting to look like desert sand or something, which gave me the idea that maybe I need to take this thing out on a beach trip next time I go to the beach. Uh, that would be really cool because I got AC and I'm going to have solar panels on it. So uh, who knows? Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. If you uh, like this video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more progress videos about my tiny toy hauler.